In this chapter, we'll talk about the different ways to manage users in DDM. DDM gives you the ability to do it locally using the DDM as user management hub. DDM also provides integration to external services like LDAP servers if you want to centrally manage your credentialing process. But don't worry, that will be covered in a separate chapter dedicated to external services in our section on scaling DDM. So let's do this. Through the many demos and lessons we've covered, you've probably seen that Dante Domain Manager allows you to have users. Now, each of these users can have a role that is tailored to their needs. We can follow the principle of least privileges. The role can be as broad or granular as you need it to be. It can also be customized to a domain or domains. Let's take a look at user roles. Users can be assigned to one of four default roles, which are site control, domain control, media control, and read only. We can also create custom roles. Each of these roles give users different levels of access to your system. User roles are not necessarily defined for an entire Dante system. Can be done on a per domain basis. In a simple scenario, we may have techs who are managing the event spaces like auditoriums. They need to be able to make changes to Dante controller by changing subscriptions or something else. We know that in a DDM environment, in order to access the managed devices, you'd need to log into DDM. This user, however, does not need access to the conference setup and therefore can be given access and rights based on his job functions. If you want to see the privileges carried by each default user role or new roles created, you can go to the roles panel. Time to dive deeper into the user roles. Let's start with the site control. The site control user role is the role with the highest privilege among the default roles. It is primarily intended for a super admin who has control and visibility over the entire managed DDM network. Site control gives the ability to inspect the audit log and manage the system settings. This means they can do things like perform updates, download system configuration or logs, add or remove TLS certificates, change network and security settings, license management, configure HA, and set up external services. Users with site control can create and delete users and user groups. For example, if you are planning on backing up your Dante Domain Manager system, only the site administrator role can do it. It is important to mention that the site control applies to all domains. They will be able to access every domain on your system and manage them as needed. And it is also worth noting that this role can be assigned to multiple people. A good rule of thumb to follow would be to create a few users initially with the site control ability as opposed to sharing the admin user created during setup. This allows better accountability and the alineation of responsibilities. The next default role is domain control, which as the name suggests, comes with privileges specific to the domain and devices. The functions of the role can be broadly divided into those in DDM and the actions in Dante controller specific to devices. Within DDM, this role is intended for those users who want to view domains and devices enrolled in domains inside DDM, monitor domains in the dashboard, enroll and unenroll devices from domains, and maybe the most important thing, adjust the clocking structure for a domain. If you remember from the previous chapter, clocking is a complicated process, and we wouldn't want everyone having the rights to make those changes. For Dante Controller, this role is intended for those users who want to create subscriptions between devices, make changes to device settings, and update device firmware within a domain. The next two roles are Media Control and Read Only which are intended for operators and guests. The media control role can make changes to subscriptions and configure devices within a domain in Dante Controller. They are not able to change any clocking parameters. Inside Dante Domain Manager, basically they will be able to see the dashboard and the domains they have access to. So they can keep an eye on their systems without making any changes on them. Finally, the last role we've got is the read-only or guest. 
Here, the guests will be able to log into DDM and see the dashboard with the domains they have access to, but without being able to make any changes to the system. Inside Dante Controller, they will have the ability to view their subscriptions and configuration, but in the same way, without being able to make changes in it. So far, the roles we have discussed are in fact the default ones you can find in DDM. This is to help you get started with creating your own user base. You do also have the ability to create custom roles. You can create those roles that work best with your own workflow. As an example, you may want to make a user role with all the domain privileges, but with only some management privileges. This is very helpful in those environments where the systems have individuals from varying departments accessing the system, but with each their own specific tasks. Let's get into a demo. Let's first take a look at the default roles. If you go to the role section, we will be able to see the four default roles. First, there's site control, where we have all these privileges. But if we move to the main control, you will see some privileges have been removed. We also have media control and read only, which as we explained before, have decreasing range of allowed tasks. Okay, so let's create a new role. Click the Add Role button at the bottom of the Roles panel, then enter a role name in the name field. We are creating a role called Technician. The next step is decide what this role will be able to do. We have to toggle the sliders to set privileges for the new role. For the users in the Technician role, we are giving them the ability to configure routing and device settings. Finally, when you feel ready, just click the Add button at the bottom of the panel and you will be able to use the new custom role for any user. So users can be assigned roles on a per domain basis like we've seen. For example, the default roles and custom user roles. DDM also gives you the ability to assign none as a user role. A role of none for a particular domain gives the user no visibility of the domain. It wouldn't show up in Dante Controller or DDM for that user. This feature is used by a lot of people to ensure security and privacy of the systems. And also, just to be clear, the domain-specific privileges are not applicable to user accounts with a default role of site control. Each user needs to be assigned a default role. The default role will be applied to all the domains in which users have not been assigned a role. For example, if I give someone the default role of domain administrator and then I create a new domain, that person automatically will have that role in the new domain. This may or may not be what you want as you grow your systems. As a rule of thumb, it's always good to use the principle of list privileges when defining default roles for your users. A good idea might be to start off every user is either a guest or with none as their user role. This will definitely prevent from any potential mishandling of the systems and gives us the opportunity to define the access of the users. Let's go ahead and create a new user. Go to the Users tab and click Add User. We must define a username and password, which in this case, it will be John Doe and a password. It's also a good practice to include an email address where they can reset their password just in case they forget it. So in this case, it will be John Doe at int-systems.com. Like discussed before, another good practice is to assign a default role. In this case, it is domain control, but we will change it to read only. Security practices are always important. Once the default role is set, we can always give different roles in different domains. For our user, John Doe, we click on the Add Domain Role option. We are going with the same default role for the meeting rooms, but a media control role for the campus theater. After that, we don't want this person accessing the other domains, so we will set them as none. Finally, we just click Add, and that's it. We will have created our first user. Now, if we go to the Dante controller and enter John Doe's credentials, we will obviously see the unmanaged domain. We can only see the meeting rooms and campus theater domains like we enable when creating the user. 
For the meeting rooms, we set the role as read-only. So the user won't be able to make any changes, just see. In Campus Theater, we have assigned the ability to edit the device and make subscriptions. When setting up users, it's always a good idea to follow industry best practices in terms of passwords, which includes password length. Now we can try logging into the DDM web GUI using the new user we just created. The first time we log in, we'll need to accept the software license agreement. Click Accept, and we get to the DM dashboard, which is tailored to our role. We recommend users change the passwords for added security. This would be a good time to do so. Click on the name, and when the Change Password option appears, click it, and we set a new one. OK, now what happens if the users forget their password? The site administrator can go into Change It manually and then have the user reset their password like we just showed. A good solution for this is to add the user's email and have the DDM integrated with your company's email system. But don't worry, we'll get into this in detail in the external services chapter. In the event you want to delete a user for whatever reason, it's incredibly easy. Just go to the users page, highlight the user you want to delete, and click in the option delete user button, which is at the bottom of the page. This is unfortunately a common scenario as individuals end up chasing jobs. This needs to be included as part of the administrative changes required upon an employee departure. But what happens if instead of the person seeks a temporary leave type situation with the assumption that they would resume their responsibilities after a certain period of time? Ideally, we would not delete that user, otherwise it would be a process to recreate a new one and give it all the benefits that user once had. This is where the option to deactivate a user comes in very hand. To do that, you just need to go to the users page, highlight the user you would like to deactivate, and then select at the top right corner the deactivate user button. Once that person is back at the company, you can activate them again. That was our chapter on user management. Next, we move on to the exciting world of system monitoring.